having your coral invert itself and expose these feeding tentacles is a fantastic feeding response. Uh, another feeding response is seeing the, the tentacles actively grab things and, and take them on. But yeah, engaging a feeding response can be different across a bunch of corals too. Uh, some feeding responses actually look like a stress response too. So there's mesenterial filaments come out of acro when they feed. Yeah. And yet some coralomorphs release these as a stress response. So I guess just knowing individual corals as to what they're doing and stuff over the year, you, you pick it up over time. But So now the, the big one and it worked kind of got you your name really not you person but coral is into brand is the black label yeah yeah whether that be chroma vibrance energy or now just cbe yeah so let's go through chroma you don't have to give any ingredients obviously yes, they're, all, they're all on the website anyway well they are down now okay okay i thought that was pretty yes how's it for about oh, yeah with the whole sds thing it's all uh, literally a plan is black down black and white yep yeah all right um, chroma let's go it's vitamins, um, if, but well, all of it is vitamins, omega threes, and fatty acids okay. to really blanket them all. If, um, but yet, yeah, B group vitamins, omega omega three, fatty acids, and that's basically what uh, an extension of grow. So the the other product, amino and grow, there's two different bottles there. Yeah, um, and. Uh, the CTE is an extension and a really souped up, amped up, hardcore version of the, the grow side of it. Like, so it is a, another vitamin based product that is used for enhanced growth and coloration. And do you dose it throughout the day, once a day, the morning, nine? Well, it's pretty different to the to be honest, but it's, I mean, going with the, the grow dosing, it is best to dose it out of the photo period because these vitamins are light sensitive as well so the grow is also light sensitive so if you're running a lot of uv light in your aquarium lights we can burn that out it's um it's not gonna lose it all but you will lose slight effectiveness so okay. if you want to maximize it we do say to dose at night um but cve because if you've got a dosing pump that can dose throughout the day yeah that's fine i do that uh, vibrance. Uh, I get, so yeah, that was, uh, again, that's the B group vitamins. So chroma and vibrance are both up a bunch of different B group vitamins. Um, yeah, and dose them together if you use the individual bottles. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay. Um, and the energy component of CVE. So it was originally chroma, vibrance and energy. And that's the omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. That's the energy. Yeah. So it's exactly the same as CBE, same product. Yes, yeah, same product, but um, it's made to be dosed on a dosing pump. Okay. Is it and more it, cost effective then if you get individual bottles? It's about the same. About the same. Yeah, it's about the same, um, but there is the added benefit of being able to go on a dosing pump. Okay. Set and forget. Walk away from it. Okay. And it, no refrigeration. Yeah, not as well as in no refrigeration. Long expiry leave. It doesn't have any seals or anything that can't be broken. Once it's broken, you have to finish it within six months, three months. Anything. Um, it's got pretty good shelf life. Okay. Um, but the uh, general idea is to not contaminate it. Like, uh, don't like, uh, for example, if you pouring it, pulling out the syringe or something, don't dip that syringe in the aquarium water and then dip it back even into the uh the bottle like you don't want to put outside inside yeah because that's when we can get some bacteria growth in the bottle and really ruin it that's with the mean on the grow as well yeah yeah definitely have, yeah okay okay so on the subject of black label then cat you i guess made famous the chroma bath and you did your videos years ago yeah oh they were even before i was around with that as well but no um, okay yeah that was bathing corals in essentially a coral dip made of chroma and vibrance but not the energy because the energy uh while now is uh, water soluble yeah the previous energy is oil based okay um so the same product but made in a different suspension um so also the energy component didn't really do much in the bath it's not really effective you know dip 
So no, I do want to dip it. Should the customer buy Chrome on Fibers separate? CDE works, um, but it's less effective than just Chroma and Vibrance together. Okay. Um, and then we you put them in just a small bucket, some aquarium water, and put your coral in there. And any coral does it work better on soft gold? Um, well, if you recoil, you're actually you're probably my favorite to see it on. Okay. Like. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty intense reaction. So you then you put your so this is what we call the, the juice bath or the sieve the the, the chroma bath. It's got chroma and vibrance. You put about ten drops of each in a liter of water or a bucket. You put your coral in there and then you add the drops. Give it a swirl around and then you ten minutes later you take the coral out, put it back in the tank, and then all that bucket water put it in your tank too because it's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then you look at the color of the corals we can also use this to heal tissue as well so if you get a coral that's stung we can get it's like kind of giving it uh, a banana bag it's a you had of had the the b vitamin bag that you get when you're dehydrated and i have it in the iv and they call it a banana bag because it's like a uh, a vitamin he was that before but yeah yeah have beef beef root vodka no the beer cans thing yeah it's a, a kiss fiddle for you yeah so um uh, Yes, yeah, so a direct infusion of vitamins directly to the coral in a concentrated amount. So they really get a hit. So not every day, every week? No, well, every second day would be all right if you really want to do it. So if, if the coral, coral is damaged or... Yeah, yeah, if it's damaged to do it, it's not damaged. And just... It's not really damaged, to be honest. There's no real reason to do it other than you just want to, like, see it souped up for a few days. But it, it's not permanent, like... As it all it is, but the really souped up look sort of fades if you don't give it the concentrated amounts. But overall, the entire aquarium is getting it anyway. Okay, so and whenever you dose any of these things, I mean, I grow traces of CD. Do you or CD if I'm dosing pups? It doesn't really matter. But do you leave the flow on in the yeah. tank? Yeah, tanky that I don't care about that. Um, these some protein skimmers actually so we're in our testing um of cde and the normal black levels um the old energy and even the new energy is actually designed to kind of drop your stereo a little bit so when it drops the skimmer will make the the fractionation in the skim and the bubbles drops we've got less chance of the vibrance and uh chrono being skimmed out and they can get skimmed out, but it's not that much. You want to really, you don't have to go and take the skimmer off to dose your products. But I would recommend having wave makers on, where she yeah. dispersing it around and either redistributes it. Yeah. And can you mix these with your foods if you're target feeding corals? In small amounts, I I would I wouldn't be going and putting concentrated concentrated amounts. Yeah. Okay. Um, especially not amino acids either, like uh, amino acids are acids that so, add them in a concentrated form and can damage your coral. Okay. And speaking of feeding, we spoke about it before, the gauge of a coral feeding. I'm mm-hmm. a real font, the response, yeah, yeah, visual response, of, what is that to it, you? Um, but yeah, it's, it's having... Uh, the gauging an actual coral feeding response, uh, first of all, you the the tentacles they're up, they're wailing around, they're happy. Uh, as in the the feeding tentacles, I mean, not the normal ones. So they corals kind of invert themselves and yeah. to become to capture prey or floating particles, if you call that prey. Um, so having your coral invert itself and expose these feeding tentacles is a fantastic feeding response. Uh, another feeding response is seeing the, the tentacles actively grab things and, and take them on. But yeah, gauging a feeding response can be different across a bunch of corals too. Uh, some feeding responses actually look like a stress response too. So there's mesenteral filaments come out of acro when they feed. Yeah. And yet some coralomorphs release these as a stress response. So I guess just knowing individual corals is to what they're doing and stuff over the you, you pick it up over time but generally the feeding response to me is 
uh, uh, the, the feeding tentacles have to be out. They have to be grabbing food. Um, a slime coating is a good one too. Some type of corals will slime up to be able to allow particles to stick to the slime and make all the slime in. Um, so yeah, range of feeding responses. And it, like I said before, but just to say it again, you don't have to do those these things whilst the coral is in feeding mode. Oh, yeah, so with your CV and everything, I wouldn't really expect much of a feeding response from those products. Um, they're, they're more of a absorbed through like a, the tissue wall. So they're, you'll see them as they're, as they're added to the, the aquarium, you can see the green glow and everything from the bigger environments. Okay. But you've got the, um, the, the it's not, it doesn't really get smelt out as a food but a coral. Um, uh, I have had a few customers say I had a feeding response from it, and I think it's just coincidental that they may have added it around the t- same time they fed the fish or something. Okay. And so it shouldn't really generate a feeding response. I mean, great if it does. There are certain amino acids that we've trialed in the past that do generate an instant feeding response. Like it's almost instant. You put a drop of this in the corals. It's not even food. It's just a like a hormone that basically or pheromone that makes them hungry. Um, so, yeah, but I wouldn't expect CDE or any of the other black label uh, liquids to do that. But there is the black label food that will generate the feel. That's the next thing, yeah. Uh, so you and Christian, yeah, both work on the farm full time. Yeah. It's taken you a few years, obviously, for developing and testing. And now, as of like two months ago in Australia, yeah. Which is, I think, where you test and release all your products first before yeah. you go overseas, similar to what yeah. Delilah does. You now have a coral food. Yeah. So what's, what's that all about? Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was released a couple of months ago. It's in the UK now, I think, somewhere to the States. Um, but yeah, the coral food is based tried and tested on the farm. We've developed it based on uh, a lot of different ingredients that we've um, uh, been using on the coral farm uh, and it is those ingredients they're all whole um whole ingredients there's nine of them there's phytoplankton uh is my favorite one in that so start with the favorite um i think phytoplankton generates one of the best feeding responses you could possibly have like it it just really gets the corals out there and hungry and then there is um chimaris rotifers cyclops uh, um, red krill, plankton, crustaceans, and yeah, I, I can't think of how they cut full there with the top lads are in all the spot. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, there's nine total ingredients. There's no other, they're all creatures that are freeze dried or um, dried mm-hmm. creatures, little yeah. crustaceans. Um, and they're either whole or blended, like the cyclops and rotifers are whole. The phytoplankton is, of course, whole because it's a powder. Yep. Um, and the others are blended up to various different grades to suit different caramels. Uh, and, and the reason that it's I've chosen, or well, we've chosen to do a powdered food instead of a pelletized food is over the years of feeding corals, and one of my favorite things is to do is to feed corals. It's just that uh, watching your corals eat is, you know, it just sat us out. So that is by watching them suck food in and yeah, yeah. So I, I've always loved doing that. And you tired of feed? Yeah, and after years on what when and and yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, we get in the, the process of feeding it and everything. And so yeah, how we develop the the food to be a powdered food or out of different grades is over the years of feeding these corals is noticing that a pelletized or chunky foods and that old uh, old thing about giving you a large polyp stony corals like your dash and your scollies a big piece of prawn i've never seen those corals eat these chunks of meat um small pellets maybe but big prawns they're spat out you feed a prawn to an anemone and it's you just find it floating in your hand and you fish eat it they don't eat it they just spit it out but what they do is a powdered food and they digest it i think it's because they the smaller pellets are easy to digest. It's much easier on that coral to digest the food. So we've moved away from, I mean, I've always 
before, when we were developing this food, which we now use in bulk on the farm, before we were doing that and during the development of it, we were always using blended up seafood, going to the fish market and getting seafood. And it was working, but we were going through a lot of blenders because <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> uh, but um, we needed the fine particles because corals weren't digesting anything big. Um, and when they're not digesting it, it's being spat out and it's rotting and it's then causing new tree issues, which are back down the start of the chain of yeah. how we approach the reef system. So, okay. So this is a powder food, like I said, a few different size particles and map this to accommodate your larger polyp yeah. corals, which can handle just a little bit size of a little bit bigger particle. And then right down to the tiny stuff like cyclops, which is like dust, man and phytoplankton, which is dust. Okay. And that's for you, SPS with the tiny pole. Okay.